Good morning. We welcome all to worship, especially visitors. For your convenience, please take note that the visitor and prayer request slips are available in the pew racks. Does anyone have any announcements? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, <clears throat> our mission, like I said, I, I know you probably think this is a broken record, but uh, I really do appreciate all the support that ch the church is giving our community because there's such a need, and uh, we're all we've always risen to the occasion, and for that I'm grateful. Uh, besides that, I did put out an all point. I do send out a lot of notes to the shut-ins and various people. So I'm looking for blank notes that I can write. I don't send generic notes, I write my own. So if you have any and you wanna get rid of them, please feel free to bring them into the church and I would be happy to use them. Um, I'm also asking if you would like to donate to Safe Burks or to Family Promise or to Opportunity House and wanna send money in, Please earmark it for those different missions, and we will gratefully use it. Thank you. Good morning, and just to follow up on that, we will be serving in an Opportunity House this coming Thursday evening. So if you're available and would like to help serve, we're always glad to have new faces and, and returning faces. Uh, if you can help out and be in there, oh, 6.30, that would be great. Thank you. And I just wanted to, you know, why did he choose that hymn? Always a, a fun question. The reason we're doing that first hymn, uh, Hallelujah, and We Are Singing, that's from the Trail of Tears. And that's what the uh, Muskegee Indians sang as they were uh, on the Trail of Tears out to Oklahoma. And so as we celebrate our country this day, I want to hold up both the good and the bad. Hold them both together. They're all part of the story. So uh, that's just, I thought you should know that. Thank you. I'm also asking for prayers for it. <coughs> My sister Olivia, who leaves for Camp Johnsonburg today. Um, are are we there clapping any... because she's going to camp or because she's leaving? Because she's just... leaving. <laughs> are there any other announcements? If none, then let us prepare our hearts for worship. for help and I was healed. We asked for freedom and we were given liberty. <laughs> Praise God. Please join me in the prayer of the day. Oh God, you send us out into the world as your disciples. Allow the church to be a healing presence, a place, a 
that live out the essence of your kingdom here and now through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and Holy Spirit one God forever amen into light, we can see ourselves as we really are. We see the spots of sin more clearly, and we realize that, God, that, we needs God, that we need God's healing and redemption. Come and confess your sins to God, and wade into the river of the healer's mercy. Please join me in the prayer of confession. God, you have caught us in your sinful behavior. Welcome to your association. We walk with our head held high, without noticing others and their burdens. We are blinded to our own. We keep our mouth silenced when we are full of stories to share about good things for us. We even keep our actions silenced as we become so overwhelmed with the needs of your world that we do nothing to overcome them. Fill us with your peace and with your mercy. Free us from destruction of sin and restore us to a life lived in you. You are the Christ, 
you receive from God when you know that your sins are forgiven. Peace is what you have when you know that the destruction of sin cannot harm you because you are not alone in your journey of life. Therefore, peace, my sisters and brothers, in Jesus we have received forgiveness and we have been restored. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. As those who are received, as those who have received peace, let us share with one another the gift we have received. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Glory be to the Father. turn to your holy word, we turn to you. Guard us, guide us, lead us in your way, and by the grace and power of your Holy Spirit, O oh Lord, may we follow. Through Christ, amen. Our first reading is Galatians chapter 6, 1 through 16, and can be found on your Pew Bibles, page 191 in the New Testament. We'll read this together. We'll read this together. No, I read this. Okay. <laughs> My friends, if anyone is detected in transgression, you will have received the Spirit. You who have received the Spirit should restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Take care that, yourself, that you yourselves are not tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. For if those who are nothing they think they are, for those who are nothing think they are something, they deceive themselves. All must test their own work, then that work rather than their neighbor's work. 
will become a cause for pride, for all must carry their own loads. Those who are taught the word must share in all good things with their teacher. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked, for you reap whatever you sow. If you sow to your own flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow to the Spirit, you will reap eternal life from the Spirit. So let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time. If we do not give up, if we do not give up. So then, whenever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all, and especially for those of the family of faith. See what large letters I make when I am writing on my own hand. It is those who want to make a good showing in the flesh that try to compel you to be circumcised. Only that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. Even the circumcised do not themselves obey the law, but they want to be circumcised so that they may boast about your flesh. May I never boast of anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the word hath been crucified to me, and I to the world. For neither circumcision nor uncircumcision is anything, but a new creation in is everything. As those, who will f as those who will follow this rule, peace be upon them, and mercy, and upon the Israel of God. Our psalm is Psalm 30 and can be found on, in your pew Bible on page 505 of the Old Testament. Now I will read the odds and you will read the evens. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O oh Lord, you brought up my soul from Sheol, restored me to life from among those gone down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O oh, you oh, his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. As for me, I said, I shall never be By your favor, O Lord, you had established me as a strong mountain. You hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cry, and to the Lord I make supplication. What profit is there in, in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will I tell you of your will it tell you will it tell of your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with the joy and clothed me with joy. So that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks to you. This is my song, O God of all the nations, a song of peace for land afar and mine. This is my home, the country where my heart is. Here are my hopes, my dreams. My holy shrine, but other hearts in other lands are beating with hope and dreams as true and high as mine. This is my prayer, O Lord of all. First kingdoms, thy kingdom come, on earth thy will be done. Let Christ be lifted up 
till all shall serve him and hearts united learn to live as one so hear my prayer O God of all the nations myself I give thee let thy will be done. Thank you, David and Don. <clears throat> Our gospel lesson this morning comes from Luke chapter 10, verses 1 through 11, and then 16 through 20, found on page 71 in your New Testament. After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. And therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you, listens to me. Whoever rejects you, rejects me. And whoever rejects me, rejects the one who sent me. The 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name, even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, but the spirits submit to you. But rejoice that your names are written in heaven. The grass withers, the flower falls. The word of our Lord endures forever. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh Lord, for the gift of your word read, we give you thanks. And now as your word is proclaimed, we pray that insofar as what is said is true, you would write it on our hearts and give us the grace to believe. And so far as it is false, may it fall to the ground, soon be forgotten, and do no harm. Amen. Independence Day weekend marks two significant anniversaries. Of course, it marks the anniversary down in Philadelphia in 1776 when the Declaration of Independence was signed in our nation born. And it also marks those fateful days, July 1 through 3, when that independence was preserved at a terrible cost at the Battle of Gettysburg. And so we mark those two anniversaries today by recalling Abraham Lincoln's wonderful words in the Gettysburg Address, which he concluded with a call to action, that we hereby resolve that government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish on this earth. And as we gather in worship this morning, that premise is in peril. Democracy is in peril. And we as people of God, as those who follow Jesus Christ, bear particular responsibility to be part of the solution. Because the threat, the peril, is poised by a force in our society called Christian nationalism. And there's a wonderful article in Christianity Today that goes into greater detail. And I've put that on our Facebook page with a link to it. And I commend it to you. But Christian nationalism is simply this. It is that, that force that says America is a Christian nation. 
America is a Christian nation. And therefore, of course, America must behave Christianly. And we have particular answers as to what behaving Christianly looks like. And in particular, we see increasingly the use of political power to compel people to behave like Christians. And whenever we start using political power to compel people to behave like Christians, they're not behaving like Christians. They're behaving like people who have to. And history shows that there is a terrible toll taken when people of faith buy into political power as a means to that end. I recall that when I, at the conclusion of my uh, course in theology at Union Seminary, where we studied at great length the work of Karl Barth, who wrote in Switzerland in the 1920s, 30s, and so on, during the rise of the Nazis. I remember Doug Otati concluding his last lecture about theology and, and the danger of confusing Christianity and nationalism by saying, that's how you get Nazis. And I realize that sounds like hyperbole. That sounds over the top. That sounds ridiculous. And so part of my goal this morning is to sound the alarm. To say that, well, yes, once that was unimaginable. Yes, once that was hyperbole. Yes, once that was, oh, pastor, settle down. It is not hyperbole anymore. It is not an exaggeration anymore. Because we are seeing this fusion of political power and Christianity to compel a particular view of the Christian vision. And of course, the danger is that it is a particular view of the Christian vision. And if you don't go along with that particular view of the Christian vision, that perhaps you are tolerant of gays, lesbians, transsexuals, and so forth. They, that doesn't fit the vision. If you are not pro-life, that doesn't fit the vision. If you are someone who is more welcoming and accepting of other people as they are, how they are, where they are, that doesn't fit the vision. They have to toe the line. And that's the danger we find ourselves in. And that is the context in which we are called to witness to what I believe is the way of Jesus Christ. The way of love, justice, and peace. And thankfully, this is not a peril that the church hasn't faced before. As I said, it was certainly faced in the 1930s in Europe. And it is faced in Scripture. Because there has always been this tendency in, in the Christian vision to define what is a real Christian. What is a real You're a real Christian if you go to church every Sunday. I was reading yesterday about the Puritans. Goodness, they were fun people. <laughs> and you were a real Christian if you didn't drink, didn't smoke, and behaved yourself. You were a real Christian. And we have always had this tendency to have these behaviors. And generally, they have to do with what do we do in our relationships? What do we do interpersonally? It's funny, that vision never has to do with our money. But Jesus has a lot more to say about our money than about our relationships. Funny that. It always has to do with that. And we're always ready to bring out those scarlet letters. And yet, Paul 
this wonderful apostle of the heart set free, will have none of it. Because what prompted him to write the letter to the Galatians was the fact that there was this party that had either come from Jerusalem or had emerged there that said, if you're going to be a real Christian, you have to be circumcised. You have to keep the law, the whole law. So, no bacon on your burgers this weekend. No cheese. Got to stay kosher. And Paul will have none of that. And so he writes to the Galatians this wonderful letter that is truly a magnum opus about being free. And he says, see what large letters I make when I am writing in my own hand. It is those who want to make a good showing in the flesh that try to compel you to be circumcised. Compel. Sound familiar? Compel you to be circumcised, only that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. Even the circumcised do not themselves obey the law, but they want you to be circumcised so that they may boast about your flesh. May I never boast about anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither circumcision nor uncircumcision is anything, but a new creation is everything. And that's the other peril in this vision of compelling people to be Christians. Is there's no new creation. God's not involved. The law is involved. You're obeying the law. Wonderful. But that doesn't make you a Christian. And so we have this going on in our society. And we see it rising. And so what are we to do about it? How are we to respond to this threat? Now you would think, since we're dealing in in Galatians with a conflict, technically, you would think that Paul would come down on the Galatians with apostolic fire. He would let them have it. Because that's what we would do, right? If you're dealing with power, you've got to confront power with power. That's how it works, right? But Paul doesn't. And just as we heard Jesus tell his disciples to go out like lambs among wolves, which, let's face it, is not a good idea. Lambs among wolves. That's not... A recipe for success and survival. That's a recipe for lamb chops. And yet, Jesus sends us out like that. And Paul, Paul tells us, if anyone is detected in a transgression, first off, my friends, my friends, this is a conflict. We're not getting along. My friend, if anyone is detected in a transgression, you who have received the Spirit should restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Take care that you yourselves are not tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. And what is that law of Christ? We learned last week in Galatians 5 that the whole law is summed up in this one command. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And the fruit of the Spirit, among other things, is gentleness. And so in this context of conflict, in this situation where we find this rise of Christian nationalism in our country, Paul urges us to respond with gentleness and with humility. Because part of what Paul is reminding us of here And I think it is the crucial thing the Christian nationalist missed is humility. Paul reminds us, take care because you could be tempted too. 
And maybe I'm not tempted by the sin this other person is committing. But pride. Oh, pride. That's always a temptation. Just as love is the fruit of the Spirit from which all the other fruit grow, pride is the sin from which all manner of sin emerge. Proverbs tells us pride goes before a fall. And it is so easy when someone else is committing a sin that we're not committing. It is so easy to judge them in our pride. How could they be doing that? Meanwhile, in God's eyes, our sin is far greater. Because when we stand in judgment of our neighbor, we are not loving our neighbor. And Jesus tells us, and Paul tells us, and Moses tells us, that this whole book is summed up in one thing. Love your neighbor. So what does this look like in practice? Because this is hard. I don't know about you, but I've been annoyed and irritated and angered. And frankly, I am limiting my social media and TV news and online news stuff for the sake of my spirit. And I urge you to as well. So how do we manage this? How do we work with this? And typically I write my sermons Friday night in my recliner in the den. And at my feet is my dog Fluffy, who is frankly a gift of grace to me. And I want to tell you about that journey because it's a journey and I think it is um, an illustration of what Paul is calling us to. Fluffy is half Greater Pyrenees and half Border Collie, which makes him very intelligent and a herding dog, and goodness gracious, can he grow fur. He is well-named. And literally weeks before the pandemic hit, we rescued Fluffy from a shelter over in um, Redland, I think it was, near York. And we brought him home. And he's a beautiful dog. So, the next morning, you take your dog out for a walk, right? And I take him out, and here's a neighbor walking his dog up the road. And I thought, well, we'll have these dogs meet. It'll be great. Welcome to the neighborhood. Well, Fluffy flipped out, lunged at the dog, and bit him on the head. So, I pulled Fluffy off, apologized profusely, fortunately... Uh, the other dog was okay, and we went back in the house. The next day, we went over to Noldy Forest, went for a walk in the woods. There were other dogs. Every time he saw a dog, he flipped out. And I thought about returning him. Is he, is he dangerous? I mean, you know, I don't want a dog that's going to bite somebody. Pastor's dog bites child. Lovely headline. So, uh, we went to the vet, and the vet prescribed some anti-anxiety medication. And she recommended a book uh, by Allie Brown, and I want to give a shout out to Allie Brown, because she's been a real gift of God to us. Uh, she's actually up in Slatington, so if you want dog training, she's in Slatington. Highly recommend it. And uh, Allie Brown's book is called Scaredy Dog. And we read the book, and, and did lessons with Allie Brown, and began to learn to learn about what it's like to have an anxious dog and how to manage that. How to respond constructively to that. And today, as I say, Fluffy is a gift of grace to us. Now, if he sees another dog, he's going to flip out. He also doesn't like FedEx or the post office. <laughs> or worse, Amazon. Um, but we have learned that that's how he is. And so we have learned strategies 
that when he sees another dog, what he wants is not to attack, he wants to escape. And so if we are out walking at Daniel Boone or wherever, and we come around the wrong corner and there is a dog, shoot, we just get out of there. We've learned that. And when Paul talks about being gentle and being humble, I think he's also talking about being teachable, being open to the other that you don't necessarily have the answers, that you don't necessarily understand, that you have things to learn. And so as you listen and you learn and you change to work with this other person, you grow and you keep that commandment. And so as we find ourselves dealing with this terrible foe of Christian nationalism, and as there is that temptation in us to want to, well, they've got the political power now, we need to get the political power. No. No. No, Paul tells us. Scripture tells us. The number one, we need to believe in God. We need to trust in God, not ourselves, not our power, God. And so simply put what Paul tells us, be gentle, be humble, bear one another's burdens, do this. And you will fulfill the law of Christ. Amen. <clears throat> Our confession of faith comes from the Declaration of Barman, which was written by Karl Barth, allegedly while the Lutherans were asleep. And it was written um, in response to the rise of Christian nationalism in Germany. Let us say what we believe. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body is joined and knit together. The Christian church is the congregation of the brethren, in which Jesus Christ acts presently as the Lord in word and sacrament through the Holy Spirit. As the church of pardoned sinners, it has to testify in the midst of a sinful world with its faith as with its obedience, with its message as with its order, that it is solely his property, and that it lives and wants to live solely from his comfort and from his direction in the expectation of his appearance. We reject the false doctrine as though the church were permitted to abandon the form of its message and order to its own pleasure or to changes in prevailing ideological and political conventions. As we come to our time of offering, again, I want to continue to thank you for your generosity, your hearing, what we're doing here with, uh, with Safe Burks, with Opportunity House, as, as the economic situation becomes more complex and more challenging, uh, the need grows. And the least of these are in need the most. So for your generosity, we give you thanks and return we offer to you a minute of peace.
Gracious God, we give you thanks this day for your blessings and your abundance in our lives. Lord, for the ways you have seen us through, for the guidance you have given. And Lord, for the way that our needs are met, we give you thanks and praise. And Lord, we return this to you and ask that through what we have given. Oh Lord, may the needs of our neighbor be met. May the love they need be received. May the hope they seek be found. May the peace they yearn for come to them. To that end, we dedicate our offerings and ourselves through Christ. Amen. Be seated. As we come to our time of prayer, um, I want you to know that Lois Klein has had a difficult couple of weeks. I've been in the hospital in and out uh, over the last two weeks, I, I believe. Janice, do you know, is she, is she home or is she still in? She's back home? She's in, still in the hospital. Okay, so she's been dealing with some complications from uh, uh, her battle with cancer. So we want to hold her in our prayers. Uh, let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, to you we offer and we owe our ultimate allegiance. You are Lord. You are the God whom we serve. Yours is the way we follow. And you know, O oh Lord, how we have wandered from your way. And you know how tempting it is to take matters into our own hands, to do the wrong thing for the right reason. And so, O oh Lord, as we come to you this day aware of the power of Christian nationalism in our nation. Oh Lord, we come to you aware of how that power is also at work in us. We ask for your mercy. We ask for your forgiveness. We ask for the grace of repentance that we might turn from that way and turn to your way. Your way of love, justice, peace, gentleness, kindness. Oh Lord, your way that we so often say is weak and helpless and hopeless. Yet, O oh Lord, it is your way. And you send us out as sheep among wolves, not as wolves among sheep. O oh Lord, help us to walk in your way. And we ask your mercy, O oh Lord, on our neighbors and our brothers and sisters in Christ who have chosen to drink from that poison cup and who dare to believe that America should be a Christian nation. Not that we should be Christians in America. Those who would seek to use the ballot box and political might to impose values and morals. And, O oh Lord, we pray for those as well this day who find themselves trembling in fear at what they see. Because their lives do not fit the mold. And they wonder what tomorrow will bring. Can they love who they love? Do they have a choice? And so, O oh Lord, we pray that you would comfort them. And that, O oh Lord, through our witness and our willingness to stand with them and bear that burden, they would know they are not alone. Lord, we pray for Lois and for all of those who are battling cancer and other serious illnesses. There seems to be so much these days. And we pray, Lord God, that you would comfort her and give her strength and peace. And Lord, we pray that the medications would work and that she could soon go home. Lord, it was her hope to be in church today. 
And so, Lord, we pray that she can be in church next Sunday. And we pray as well, O oh Lord, for those who are dealing with the conflicts in our world. We pray for the people of Ukraine and the people of Russia as they endure tyranny's might. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would soon bring about an end to war there. And Lord, there are wars in Yemen, South Sudan, so many places. So we pray, O oh Lord, for peace in this, your world. And Lord, we give you thanks this day for our nation. We give you thanks, O oh Lord, that we live in a nation where we can gather in your name and proclaim your name. Whether it is part of what is popular or whether it is part of what is unpopular. Whether it goes along with the values uh, that are in power or not. O oh Lord, we can gather. And we recognize and celebrate that that is a unique privilege. And Lord, we ask your blessing on our leaders as we live, as always, in complicated times, but with war in Ukraine, inflation and economic challenges, and, oh Lord, that the health crisis continues. It is not an easy time to be a president or in Congress or on the Supreme Court or the governor's office, or the legislature, or Lord, city council, borough council, township council. And so for those, O oh Lord, that you have lifted up to lead us in this day and age, we ask your blessing and your grace. And O oh Lord, we pray that you would bless we the people, that you would bless us and keep us and guide us in your way. Where we have gone astray, grant us repentance. And where we are following, O Lord, may we know the abundance of your blessing. To that end, we pray through Christ, our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. dismissed. We are sent to serve. We are sent to serve the needy with an open hand. We are sent to serve the stranger with an open mind. We are sent to serve our neighbor with an open heart. 
We are set to serve our Lord, whom we will meet when we serve. And as we go forth to serve, know that we do not go alone. The Lord Jesus goes with us, above us to watch over us, beneath us to sustain us, beside us to befriend us, behind us to defend us, before us to show us the way, and always within us making all things, including us, new. Go in peace. Go with God. Amen.